everybody. How's everybody doing today? It is a gorgeous beginning to the month of March. A little bit chilly, so I spent most of the weekend inside playing Breath of the Wild uh, for Wii U. So I want to tell you guys a little bit about the game, and I'm going to keep it uh, spoiler free. Uh, first impressions of the game are it is really awesome. I like it very much. Not quite what I was expecting. Now, warning, I'm going to talk about the game mechanics now. Uh, no story whatsoever. Story's going to be completely spoiler free. But game mechanics, I'm going to actually talk about some of the things I like and don't. So if you want to go in fresh, even about the mechanics itself, you probably ought to turn this off. But spo story completely spoiler free. So obviously now, open world, um, very much in the vein of, uh, reminds me a lot of the Elder Scrolls series, in particular Skyrim, but uh, to a certain extent also Morrowind and Oblivion as well. Not entirely what I was expecting. Um, and for that reason, it's, it, it, it strays away from some of the Zelda tactics that you normally see. Like, you know, you, you have weapons that need to be maintained. You don't get a sword and keep it. Uh, you're cooking for yourself um, rather than just buying milk or potions. You make your own potions, which are kind of, that's kind of cool. Uh, you know, have, you have certain stats uh, that, that, that gain your amount of stamina and whatnot. Um, the rock climbing, I was surprised you're able to just do that bouldering as soon as you get out of the game. I thought that was going to be like a, uh, a, a, an item or something you acquired in a dungeon. Um, but the biggest thing, my concern, <clears throat> was as far as the overworld actually goes, <coughs> it's not as open as the original Zelda game so far. There's been a lot of, um, you have to go to this specific place. There's, you know, specific missions and quests and let me mark it on your map types of things that you see in Elder Scrolls. Whereas in the original Zelda game, of course, you didn't have that at all. You didn't even have a map of, of really any kind uh, outside of that little uh, you know, in-game in uh, pixelated thing in the corner. But basically, this leads to the dungeons, which my impression was you were going to have to, like the original Zelda game, go and find these dungeons on your own and figure out which one you could go into uh, first. And I'll say this, I did come across a spot several times in the game where I met monsters that completely overpowered me um, and I couldn't stand a chance. I was able to get around a few of them by using some cheap tactics, uh, but then a few others just, no, there's no get past these guys until you're stronger. So I thought that was cool. But then the dungeons, I don't know if there's going to be any dungeons. Now, again, I haven't really gotten into it yet. Um, I've only played for maybe about five, six hours. Uh, but so far, I get a lot of these little mini dungeons. Not, I'm not going after eight pieces of something like you would normally be doing in a Zelda game. Uh, and I'm fine with that so far. It's a lot of fun. I just wasn't what I was expecting. Now, um, again, straying from the norm for a Zelda game, music. The music that is there is awesome, but there is very little of it. Uh, when you get into a town, you know, a village or something like that, music does pop up. It's pretty subtle. But then, just out in the overworld, it's very Skyrim-esque. There's some, um, you know, lots of ambient noise and the wind rustling and the crickets chirping and the birds tweeting, but then, you know, maybe you get a little piano motif here and there, but that's about it. So going one step further with that, I was thinking probably the ideal would be if we could get the Zelda theme of, or, or, or an overworld theme of some kind to pop up every now and again would be awesome. Uh, or maybe it could pop up under certain circumstances, maybe when it's sunny outside. Uh, it would be really cool if you could set some kind of a, a scale in the options. How much music do you want? I want the music to be playing all the time. I never want the music to play. Sometime in between, and then it can phase in and out based on your selections. That, that might be kind of cool. But as it stands, the music itself, which is excellent, is just so much more um, ambient than any of the uh, Zelda games I've played previously, which only bothers me in that I'm not probably going to look back on this like I did on Twilight Princess and think, wow, that music was awesome. Um, and then last is the art style. The art style is fantastic. I think it bridges the gap perfectly between the Wind Waker and the Ocarina and the Twilight Princess fans. It's, you know, bright and colorful and, you know, um, 
and cartoon-esque, but without being goofy at all. All of the characters are built on, uh, you know, more realistic character models like you would see from a game like um, Twilight Princess, not the uh, uh, goofy, big head, obnoxious looking characters like you would see from um, uh, some of the old, like uh, Ocarina or uh, Wind Waker. Now, um, I think that the style is, is fantastic and, and meshes them all absolutely perfectly together. So, um, what I was actually expecting was just a bit more like, this is the original Legend of Zelda game. You're in this huge world, there's lots of stuff to do, overland, but then ultimately you gotta find these eight hidden temples, and once you find them you gotta go in and you gotta defeat them, and um, or defeat the boss at the end of the temple, solve puzzles while you're in the temple, and then get that one item. You do that eight times, then you go into the last temple and uh, uh, defeat the enemy. And that was kind of what I was expecting, and I don't think it's straying too much from that, but it's these temples that's the big thing. Number one, uh, the, the, the temples are shrines, and they're very small. You go in and there's like one or two little puzzles. It's not a matter of, it's not like the water temple in uh, Ocarina. And then lastly is um, the overworld, open world aspect of it, is you're, you're guided to a certain extent where you need to be. And there's also that sense of urgency that you got in um, Skyrim, but you never got in Morrowind. Uh, or you got in uh, Oblivion, you got it huge. Where you have to hurry up, this is very important, this needs to be done now, 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 when actually you can kind of meander about and spend months becoming the leader of the Fighters Guild and leader of the Magicians Guild and um, Assassins Guild, all that stuff and then come back to the main quest where they were so urgent for you to do this stuff, come back to the main quest years later and it's still fine, nothing has changed. So you're giving this, they're giving you the same, you must hurry, this quest is important, uh, and they're marking it on your map. But I will say there did come a point, and this is exactly the point I just got to, so I can't speak to it much further than this, but there did come a point where I did, had no marker on my map. I had things I needed to do but they were very vague it didn't tell me exactly where to go to do them or how to do them and I think that's really cool um, the game even starts out in one province and you're kind of trapped in that province for a very very short period of time uh, just a few things you need to do in that province learning game mechanics and whatnot and I thought that was awesome uh, ultimately I think this game is gonna be absolutely fantastic if you're a Zelda fan at all you should love it there's a few things about it you might not like but as long as you're a fan of uh, action games, uh, adventure games, you're, you're gonna love this game. I would highly recommend it to anybody. I will come back once I've completed the game or, or maybe if I come to some big uh, major uh, revelation in the game, I'll come back and uh, tell you more. But for right now, uh, go out by the game